to okay, make a, a break from theory and to use a bit the uh, media to try to do random forest. So if you have the shaded files, you have a folder called data. Okay? So if you open Madla, we can go to the uh, data folder and you have a list of data sets. Okay? And you have also a PDF file explaining a bit I mean, all these data sets. I mean, these are benchmark data sets, so I will use them. But I mean, if you have your own data set here and you want to try, I mean, do it. Okay? So if you have a, already some data you can classify, you can use it. Uh, we can use uh, uh, this file, BCF. Okay? And we will have a look now what is it. So if you double click, uh, I mean here you have everything. It is uh, already, uh, let's say, ready to be used. Okay, we have a training set and a test set, but if you open the PDF, data PDF file, we have, uh, I think, some information on uh, this data set. Okay. Uh, okay. So, I cannot really use this here. Yeah. Um, so, here we have a, a, a data matrix. Okay, so a very, let's say, small data set. And, so very different with respect, okay, to what we were trying during the break, me and Jose, okay? In the Raman data set, you, have, you had a few samples. It was like, how many, 70 samples? No, 30, 30, uh, 50. Uh, 50 samples yeah. and 3,000 variables, okay? Here is the opposite. We have a good number of samples and few variables. Okay. Uh, what is this data set about? <coughs> this is a QSAR application. Okay, so each sample, okay, so each row is a molecule, okay, a chemical. Okay? And uh, what people do uh, describes molecule, okay, with variables which are called molecular descriptors, like the molecular weight, for example, is the most uh, simple one, okay? Some features, numerical features, which describe the structure of a chemical. So, for example, molecular weight, the number of bonds, okay? The number of uh, carbon atoms, and so on, okay? These are numbers which describe a chemical, okay? This is our data matrix. Then, for each molecule, okay, we have uh, the, let's say, classification in two classes, okay? Molecules are classified on the basis of an experimental test as bioaccumulable or not bioaccumulable, okay? Of course, these chemicals are somehow dangerous because they can bioaccumulate on organisms, okay? So we have two classes. So each sample 
each molecule is classified as bioaccumulable or <coughs> not bioaccumulable. Okay? And we want to have a model to classify chemicals in one of these two classes on the basis of these molecular descriptors. Okay? Why? Because, let's say, we synthesize a new molecule, okay? And we want to put this molecule on the market. Then, we have to know if this molecule is bioaccumulable or not, okay? Because we have to provide <coughs> this information before we put this molecule on the market, okay? So we can do the experimental test to measure this, okay? But for a single molecule, the test costs around 55,000 euros, okay? Or we can use this model, okay? So this molecule, we can easily calculate the molecular descriptors, which are numbers, okay? The molecular weight, the number of uh, carbon atom, the number of uh, bonds or whatever. And then we use our model, the classification model, to predict if this new chemical is bioaccumulable or not, on the basis of our classification model. Okay? So here we have uh, 392 samples, molecules. Uh, sorry. We have 39, no, 392 not bioaccumulable and 81 bioaccumulable. So the total number of samples is. 473, okay? And we want to, okay, do this classification. Now, if we go back to MATLAB, where is MATLAB? Oh, okay. Here we are. Okay, so here you have everything we need for a, a classification model. So, here, here, this is the training set, okay, data matrix, and the test set. So, I have already split my data set in a training set and a test set, okay? And I will use the test set to validate my model, okay? So, remember, this is very, always important. Here we have enough samples, okay, to do this split, and I put around uh, uh, 95 samples in the test set, okay? I will use those samples to uh, validate my model. Uh, then I have the class for the training set, and of course the class for the test set, okay? The classes are labels, not be accumulable, be accumulable, and so on, okay? And we can try to get a nice classification order. So, to do that, of course, there are many, 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 many ways, but we can try to do, uh, um, maybe we can try also a classification tree before, and then we can try to do a random forest, okay, just to see. So, uh, you have many opportunities to do all this stuff. <laughs> Of course, there are uh, softwares in uh, Python, uh, in R, of course, in MATLAB, okay? Uh, we have done these uh, toolbooks that you can use. It's for free. So if you go to the code uh, folder, classification toolbooks 7.0, okay? You can enter this folder. And you can uh, open the toolbooks by typing uh, class underscore GUI. Do you want this to be bigger or you can see it? It's okay? Okay. It's a little bit bigger, please. Bigger, please. Okay. Uh, where is it? Uh, I don't see the properties. Uh, was that? Uh, yeah, reference. Reference. Uh, uh, Fonts. Fonts. You can also do control. Yeah. Control plus. Yeah, but I don't 
but it's a lazy guy. You know. yeah. Okay, now we like okay. it. Okay, here. Now we like it in the camera. Nice. Okay, you press enter, you get. A, you should get this uh, graphical interface, and then we can do everything through this interface. Okay. Uh, you have several menus. Okay, here you have an help file. So you can keep these two books and if you want then to use it in the future, you can. And you get a... Um, it's not a full help file, but something that can help you to use all the features of the, of the two books, okay? But now we go straight to, to the classification of our dataset. So, first of all, we have to load the data. Okay, so file, load data, and we can select our train set, load, then file, then we have to select the class, okay, and uh, we can select the class train, string, okay, so we have the labels of the classes. And that's all, okay? This is what we need to, to make the, uh, the classification, okay? Uh, okay, you have some menus to do, you know, uh, very basic. Uh, if you want, you can have a look, but you can uh, do some smooth, not in this case, because these are not spectral data, but if you have spectral data, you can smooth your data, you can plot the, uh, if you have spectra. You can do some plots, you can do very basic uh, univariate stuff like box plot or uh, stuff like that, okay? But if you go to the calculate menu, then you have the list of all the classification methods, okay? Some of these methods you know, okay? Like PLSDA. Um, I try to separate these methods in three families, okay? Discriminant analysis and PLSDA, which is the basic linear methods. Do you know SIMCA? No? Yes or no? Okay, these are all the class modeling methods, okay, which is a different family of classifiers. And then here you have uh, the others, okay, which are, let's say, not linear method, okay. CART, classification trees, random forest, super vector machine, we are going to see later. KNN and uh, okay, that propagation neural network. Okay, so maybe you want to start from CAT. Okay, we can start from here. So, here the approach is very basic. So, I decide how to do the, I mean, it's, uh, let's say all the settings are by default. Okay, so the pruning of the tree, everything. Of course, if you feel familiar with MATLAB, then you can go to the code, okay, and you can uh, change a lot of uh, options even for doing uh, classification trees, okay, like the ones we have seen before, okay, like the minimum number of samples you can have in a leaf and all this stuff, okay. Here we use just the default settings, okay. And uh, I mean, CAP is very simple because you don't have to select anything. Okay, you have just to calculate the, the classification tree and you can select how to do cross validation, okay, or validation. You can keep a Venetian blind cross validation. Okay, and this is CAP. Okay, what? <laughs> and this is the classification tree, which is uh, actually a little bit complicated, okay? It looks, if you look here, I mean, it's not overfitting, but uh, there is a little bit of difference between the error you get. Okay, this is the error rate you get on the training set, and this is the error rate in classification you get in cross-validation, okay? There is a little bit of difference here. And this is the classification tree, okay? Can you see all the splits <coughs> of the variables, okay? <coughs> of this tree. 
Of course, then you can, uh, I mean, as I said, you, this is the basic, a very, very basic approach. But for example, you could decide to prune this tree and to simplify it. Okay. But then it gets harder in a I mean, computational point of view. Okay. And you have to code a bit. Okay. In MATLAB. Okay. And these are all the splits, the separated classes. But it is very straightforward. I mean, okay, this is variable number one, this is the, this is the tree shot, okay, and then you go in the tree. Okay? Let me see. If you go to results, this is the only output you have from a uh, card, okay? If, you, if we go to results, classification, measure, okay, then you get some, uh, okay, you get some further details on the classification, okay, of the classes. This is the results in, on the training set, and this is the results in cross-validation, okay. This is the uh, error rate, it's the same we have seen here, okay, on the training set and in cross-validation. And these are the sensitivity and specificity, okay, for the two classes on the training set and in cross-validation. Do you know what is sensitivity and specificity? Right? Okay, sensitivity for one class is the ability of that model to correctly classify the samples of that class. Specificity for a class is the capacity of the model to correctly classify samples of the other classes. Okay? And when you have two classes, the sensitivity of one class corresponds to the specificity of the other class. Okay? So what happens in our model, which I don't like so much, can you see here? Okay, on the training set it works nice, nicely. Okay, 90% of not bioaccumulable samples are correctly classified and 93% of bioaccumulable samples. In cross-validation, you have some problems on this class. Okay? This class is the one which is uh, not well classified, okay, with respect to the training samples. Okay? 75% of bioaccumulable samples are correctly classified, which means that 25% of bioaccumulable samples are classified as not bioaccumulable, right? Which is not good, okay? Because I have something dangerous, which is bioaccumulable, which is classified as, let's say, not dangerous, okay? So we can have a, a look at these numbers and this is what's going on on uh, with card okay questions so I wouldn't use this model honestly okay now same data set Before doing random forest, do you know discriminant analysis? It's a very benchmark method, it's a linear method, okay? We can try to do a model with discriminant analysis, which is very simple, just to have a, a benchmark, okay? Uh, so we can do discriminant analysis, fit discriminant analysis, okay, fit DA. Okay, we can choose this stuff. We can do also some validation. Okay, here the error rate is 20% in fitting <coughs> and 20% in cross validation. Okay, did you get the same results? Yeah, okay. And we can have a look to the classification measures. Okay. 
and here there, I mean, there is no kind of overfitting, but we still have the same problem. Okay, can you see here the results we get on the training and on, in cross validation as, are very similar. And again, we have one class which is not well classified, which are the bioaccumulable samples. Okay, we have only 60% of. Uh, uh, sensitivity, which means 40% of samples of this class are classified as non-bioaccumulable. Okay? Uh, okay, we can uh, okay, use this as a, like a benchmark, okay? So when I usually do classification, I start from the most simple discriminant analysis, if I can, or PLSDA, and then if it works, okay, if it doesn't work, then I try to do some something more complicated, let's say. Um, if you want, you can try to do PLSDA, whatever. Let's try random forest. Okay. Now, what what time is it? It's only eleven. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we have plenty of time. Um, okay. So random forest. Here, I try to simplify it. Okay, as I said you. So the only thing you have to choose is the number of trees you want to grow in your forest. Okay? But as I said you, okay, if you are if you can code in MATLAB a bit, then you can go to the details and you can tune a lot of other parameters. Okay? Let me show you something. <coughs> So I use it, uh, this, uh, this is a, let's say, function you have in MATLAB. Why is it not? Okay. <coughs> I would say, os. <laughs> more, more. Os. Now, yeah, now. Oh, okay. Okay, this is the function, okay, to calculate random forests. Uh, and you have, these are the input arguments, so what you can input in this function, okay. I mean, if you Google tree bagger MATLAB, you, you will get it, okay. Uh, the input arguments are all of this, but then you have all the options can you see? These are all the options you can use, okay, to calculate a random forest. So you can really play a lot with all these parameters. That means that you can <laughs> lose a lot of time, okay? But you can improve your model. Um, okay, so here I have tried to simplify, okay, here. So the only thing you can choose is the number of trees. How to do that? I mean, as I said, you we can. What I would do, okay? I would try to make cross validation with 10, 50, 100, 500, 1000 trees and see which is the option which gives us the lowest error in cross validation. Then you should ask me why not 10,000? Yeah, it could be 10,000. I don't know, there is no a limit, probably, okay? But uh, I think uh, 1,000 then, I mean, with this data set, it could take uh, maybe, I don't know, 15 minutes to calculate. We can, we can try, okay? With this mm -hmm. old laptop, it could take uh, some, some time, but we can try, okay? So if you click Optimal Trees, we will do this stuff, okay? And this could take time. So now, if you have questions, it's, a, it's the right moment to do that, to ask questions. Okay? Because here it takes time because I repeat this procedure every time I do the same 10 times to avoid the variability which is uh, in random forests. Okay? You have variability because every time you run a random forest is a little bit different. And I don't know how much different is it, 
Okay, so I try to do it in this way. But then maybe there are some other ways, I don't know. Okay, but I've tried to do this. Your is faster or is this the same speed? No? <laughs> okay, let's wait. Coffee time. I don't know, yeah. So, um, yeah, meanwhile, let's see, let me see if I have some uh, uh, other things to say. Okay, we will, uh, meanwhile, we will end up with something like this, okay? So we will have a plot of how does the error rate in cross validation changes, okay, with the number of trees, and also how does it change the error on the out of bag samples, the one we let we leave out during the bootstrap, okay, as a function of the number of trees, okay. But I have the I don't know the idea that. The, the, the error in cross-validation will not change so much with the number of trees. At least after, I mean, if you use, of course, two or three trees, then it can change, okay? But after a certain number, like 50, 100, then usually it goes like, uh, it is like stable, okay? Uh, yeah. Just to remind you, okay, what we are going to see. This is a, uh, a confusion matrix, okay. So when you have a classification model, then you can look at the error in this way, okay. Uh, these are the true classes. In this case, bioaccumulable and not bioaccumulable, and these are the predicted classes, okay. <coughs> This is the number of bioaccumulable samples which are correctly classified as bioaccumulable. This is the number of bioaccumulable samples which are erroneously classified as not bioaccumulable, and so on. Okay, so you read this metric in this way. Okay, then the sensitivity for the bioaccumulable class is equal to A. divided A plus B, which is the total number of bioaccumulable samples we have. Okay, this is the sensitivity of the bioaccumulable class. The specificity of the bioaccumulable class is equal to, okay, specificity is how does the classifier works on the other, of, on the samples of the other classes. So the specificity of the bioaccumulable class is D, divided by C plus D, which is the number of samples 
which are not the accumulable. Okay? And if you look, the sensitivity of the bioaccumulable class is equal to the specificity of the not bioaccumulable class. And the specificity of the bioaccumulable class is equal to the sensitivity of the not bioaccumulable class. You get it? Okay. Then uh, there is one thing called the uh, called the balanced accuracy. <coughs> balanced accuracy which is also called the non-error rate, okay? which is equal to the sensitivity plus the specificity divided by 2, or better. Sorry. It's the same thing, but it's better to write sensitivity of the accumulable class plus the sensitivity is the average of all the sensitivities. Okay? And there is so sensitivity and specificity ranges from 0 to 1, the higher the better. The non error rate ranges from 0 to 1, the higher the better the classification is. Okay? <coughs> And the error rate is equal to 1 minus non-error rate. <coughs> so it's just a complement. Okay? These are the figures of merit you have here. In this matrix, you want these two numbers to be as low as possible. Okay? In the previous case, do you remember, we have a lot of... Uh, non accumulable no, sorry, we have a lot of bioaccumulable samples classified as not bioaccumulable. So B, is, B was very high, I mean, somehow high, okay? And we want these two numbers, we want these two numbers to be very, very low. When two, these two numbers are low, sensitivity and specificity goes to 1, the non error rate, which is the average, goes to 1, and the error rate goes to 0. Okay, and we have a plot, I guess. Nice. Did you get something? No? My PC is like 15 years old. Okay. I can be faster than yours. Uh, anyway, I think you, if you will get something, it will be similar to this. Okay? But neither, no one is this guy still calculating. Okay, almost. Okay, this is very easy. Okay. Uh, okay, as I said you, okay, the error rate in cross validation, so this stuff, okay, the error rate, okay, estimated in cross validation, so on the left out samples in the cross validation procedure as a function of the number of trees, okay? We repeated this stuff 10 times, so these bars are variability of our results, okay? So what I see is that the higher the number of trees, the lower the variability. Well, the error rate changes, but very, I mean, uh, with 50 trees, I have a stable error rate, almost, okay? And this is, again, the error on the out-of-back samples, okay? As a function of the number of trees, okay? And here again, after some, sample, after some iterations, okay, it is stable. I don't know. How many trees would you select? 1,000. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I, I would say, and just to avoid variability, okay, I would put the highest number. Okay? But, I mean, if you say 500 trees is okay, I mean, okay? Uh, I would not use them. Okay, this is easy to understand. 
Okay? So, okay, let's try to use 1000. Please, okay? Now we can calculate the model. We have to wait a bit. <laughs> uh, you have a lot of free time to use this stuff. Okay, so let's try now to see. Uh, so the model is calculated. So error rate uh, on the training set in cross validation. Okay, let's try to see the classification measures. Okay, here you are. Um, and here we are in a similar situation as before, again, okay? This is a little bit better than uh, discriminant analysis, honestly, okay? With discriminant analysis you get an error rate of uh, around 20%, okay? And the sensitivity here of the bioaccumulable class was 60% in cross-validation, okay? So here is a... we have to admit the... <laughs> This is a little bit better than uh, this game in the Well, if you compare one straight line against 1,000 trees, you expect to be better. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, still, we have uh, a problem in the model, okay? Because there is one class which is very well classified, but one class which is not, and this is the most dangerous class, okay? So that means that in that matrix, B the term B is high, the number of bioaccumulable classified as not bioaccumulable. In cross-validation is around 25%, yes. But also there is a little bit of overfitting in this model. Uh, well, yeah, 8 to 14. It's a almost little, a double. Little bit, I mean, yeah. Little, it's, uh, I mean, but I think it's, uh, I think it's uh, something you have to accept with these models, 